Hey everybody, welcome to the channel and the Minnesota Twins franchise on MLB The Show 19. Today we continue on in the 2021 season and we're going to see us take on the New York Yankees and we'll get a chance again to see rookie pitcher Randy Rosario who has been filling in for Dallas Keuchel and is now filling in for Yadier Alvarez. Right now the Twins and Yankees are each in first place of their divisions and perhaps the Yankees are our top competition for the AL pennant. The AL East is really competitive and the Yankees currently have a small lead. We'll see if they can hang on to it. But they've had a really good roster in this series. And during the offseason when they were trying to sign Mookie Betts, I knew that we had to at least try to bring Mookie Betts to Minnesota and we did. And the Yankees still have a better record than us right now by one game. So let's see Rosario take the mound again. He's made two starts. Each has gone five innings exactly. And now against the Yankees, his day opens with a line drive that falls into center. That's a base hit for Luis Barreto, the rookie. And then a pitch in the dirt blocked by Garver. Barreto trying to take second and he's thrown out. Good job by Garver not letting the ball get far away. Now Kevin Pillar with a base hit through the right side. That brings up Michael Brantley. 283 average on the year. Again, Garver had to block it. And Pillar taking off is going to be thrown out as well. Twice in a row the same play. So now a full count to Brantley. And he'll rip this one to right. The first three all reach for New York but there's no scoring threat. Now Mark Trumbo batting in the fourth spot as he fouls off the high fastball. One, two, in there for strike three. The circle change gets him and Rosario's out of the first. Let's see the Twins hit now. Mookie Betts turned down, what was it, a four or five year deal with New York to instead play a couple years in Minnesota. We're facing Luis Severino in this matchup. Very good numbers on the season, developing into an ace for the Yankees. And he'll strike out bets to open the day on a slider low in the zone. Paul Goldschmidt up next, still has his average up in the 300s as Severino gets a cold strike a little below the zone. And on the 0-2, Goldschmidt in the air hit to center field. Pilar hardly has to move and he's retired. How about Miguel Sano? Well, he's been playing a lot better lately, so back up in the batting order. He's hitting over 500 now in his last five games, and he rips this one to left center field. It's high, it's hit deep, and this is not quite out of here. Pilar makes the catch at the edge of the track. One more look. For sure I thought it was gone, but just barely missed it by that much. Let's take it into the second then. Gary Sanchez up for New York and he'll get the Yankees already their fourth hit of the game. And then we'll see Aaron Judge who hasn't had a huge impact in this series but now he's beginning to develop. 0-2 on the ground. The flip to second and Judge is doubled up. Yankees not doing much with these early base runners. We'll go bottom two and this is Yasiel Puig that is driven to left. It's hit high and hard, and this one is gone. A solo home run. What a season it's been for Puig. I think he's now just a couple home runs shy of what he did a year ago. A completely different player at the plate this season. The Twins pull ahead, and we go top three with some high heat from Randy Rosario, picking up another strikeout, his second and with two down, back to Barreto at the top of the order, hitting this hard to deep left field. Betts is back to the track to make the catch. Yankees still scoreless. Can the Twins get anything more off Severino? A full count here to Jorge Polanco, who draws a walk. Severino with the pitch count still in the high 30s here, bottom three. Now Betts turn, and that's going to reach the backstop. Sanchez has it, a jump throw to second. Pretty risky there as Polanco easily works into scoring position. So now a two and two count to Betts. And he gets jammed a bit. It's lined to first and caught by Greg Bird. Two down. Goldschmidt now with Polanco. A base hit away and he pops it up. Shallow left field. And the catch is made. Still just one nothing. We'll take it top four. Pilar batting. 
And fouling off the fastball, falling behind in the count. With two strikes, he lifts one into left field. It's down the line. Sano gives chase and it falls between him and Betts. There's not much room for this one to be a hit. But somehow, it falls right in. Pilar now at first. Brantley batting 0-1 and lines this into left center field. Another hit allowed by Rosario. This his sixth hit allowed already. He had those lucky plays with Garver plus a double play. He could use another now. Trumbo falls off a high slider. Falls behind in the count and this is sent past Goldschmidt in the right field. Puig's gonna pump and a run scores. Now runners at the corners for New York as they tie things up. Gary Sanchez next, and there's some heat from Rosario at 96, collecting his third strikeout. Can he get out of the jam against Judge? This is a grounder up the middle, another run scores. Two aboard now for the Yankees. And that brings up Greg Bird. At least we have the lefty-lefty matchup with a full count. Over to Goldschmidt, out at second, return not in time. That extends the inning for Franklin Barreto. And he grounds it over to first. What a stop by Goldschmidt, and the inning is over. A couple runs do come around for New York, but it could have been a lot worse. So the Twins now trying to get that run back as Sano draws a walk. And with nobody out, now it's Conforto's turn. That's hammered to first and right to Bird. They got the out at second, and they will convert the double play. I mentioned earlier that the two starts Rosario has made so far have each gone five innings. Trying to make it a third straight after a base hit. Here's a shallow pop-up in right field. It falls in. It just seemed like Rosario could not catch a break on these balls in play. Brantley 2-1. And this is a grounder getting through now. And Puig had to get over to the gap to get this. A run's going to come around the Yankees up 3-1. Really tough outing for Randy Rosario. Now facing Trumbo, he does get the big strikeout, but he does not finish the fifth inning. With his struggles today and being a lefty pitcher, I was worried that Gary Sanchez or Aaron Judge could basically end the game right here. Tyler Duffy comes in and walks Gary Sanchez. So now base is juiced. Got to get Aaron Judge out. Breaking ball fouled off. Duffy's able to get ahead. Two strikes. And a grounder over to Goldschmidt. That was left over the middle. Twins catch a break, and the Yankees only get three runs. They certainly had a chance to get a lot more, so it's still a game. Minnesota trying to get the offense going against Severino, but the one hit we had, that solo homer, is really all they've had as Severino has shut down the order and strikes out Garver to end the fifth. The bullpen trying to keep things close. Franklin Barreto, top six, connects on one. It's way out to left center, and it's not coming back. What a swing. Yankees get the solo home run to make it 4-1. Bottom six now. Mookie bets up, and he pops one up over in foul territory by first base. Severino retires another Twins batter. How about Paul Goldschmidt? A pitch up, and he's going to pop it up as well. Nothing besides the Miguel Sano near home run and the Puig solo shot. So we go into the seventh now. Michael Brantley's not finished. Lefty versus lefty slammed into the corner. Here's Puig's arm on display, but not there quick enough to get Brantley. Four to one, now Gary Sanchez with two down. Freeman's gotta get to this one. And then foul territory makes the spinning throw. This is one of those games that could have easily been 10 to one at this point. Twins still in it as the sun sets. Good swing from Sano right at Kevin Pilar. Michael Conforto, can he get us going? Two strike count. He connects a fly ball to right field, but not a far run for Aaron Judge. Minnesota bottom eight, running out of outs here. One and two to Gordon, and wide of the chalk. Yankees finally had to go to their bullpen here, but Tance is in the game, and Gordon's going to give us our second hit. It's not much, but we're only three runs down. Now it's Garver, and he's down on strikes again. A perfect slur from Batances on the outside corner. That'll bring up Jorge Polanco, who... 
gives us a patient at bat here. Getting ahead 3-0. and And missing inside apparently. We'll take it. We need base runners. And now the tying run is up. Mookie Betts. He turned down the Yankees in free agency and now could give them a real reminder of that. As he faces Sean Doolittle. They brought in a lefty. I couldn't believe it as Betts falls off the fastball. The 2-1 curveball misses, and now a good count for Betts, 3-1. Oh, they called that a strike! Betts thought it was ball four, he's right, but back in the batter's box, this is hammered down the line, but he's a bit in front, nearly a tie game. That's fouled off as well, we got a battle here, Doolittle versus Betts. Missing outside, Mookie Betts walks, the bases are loaded. Another new pitcher is coming out of the bullpen for New York and up for Minnesota, Paul Goldschmidt. Representing the go-ahead run. Oh, one, popped him up again. That's what happened in his previous at-bat and the Yankees get out of the jam, still preserving the three-run lead. Kevin Quackenbush out of the pen for Minnesota, having kind of a tough season, and I might want to call up Andres Valdez soon and figure out who's going to be sent down. Here is a ground ball over to Gordon, he stopped it quickly to his feet, what a play. Twins getting some great defense in this game, but how about the offense? Just the solo homer and the bases loaded threat in the eighth. But now it looks like this is going to end poorly for Minnesota as Yasiel Puig strikes out and the game is over. Yankees come into Minnesota. Luis Severino gives them an outstanding outing. And the Yankees build upon what I do believe is the American League's best record. Severino goes seven, struck out five. And the Twins only had three base runners off of him. Now, I wanted to get to another game in this episode, but Mitch Garver suffered a concussion, so we have to make another move to the injured list and call up Cam Gallagher, which means that Justin O'Connor is now going to start at catcher. Minnesota took game two of the series, so now the deciding game three at target field with Maxwell Fowler taking the mound. Nobody has more wins this year than him. Opening now against Gene Segura. Here's a grounder hit over to short and a pump fake. I don't know. I was confused while that happened. So a base runner reaches, called an E6. That's what they ruled it. Now facing Kevin Pillar. Fowler gets in front and breaks out the changeup. I'm trying to figure out how to get more strikeouts with Maxwell Fowler and how to best pitch with him. Here's a strikeout upstairs, but we can't get Segura taking second base. Fowler doesn't get a ton of strikeouts, so to already have two is pretty impressive. Here's a two and two fastball missing high. That could have been strike three. And then missing three two versus Trumbo. This is what happens sometimes. At bats and innings just drag on with Max. Here he gets ahead of Gary Sanchez. Oh and two. There's the slider away. I want to do a lot more of that because if you're constantly around the zone with Fowler, they'll just foul everything off. Minnesota's up against Drew Pomeranz in this game, and here is Goldschmidt with a big swing and miss. Minnesota's hitting has not been that great in a lot of our latest episodes. Another strikeout for Pomeranz as he strikes out the side to open. But obviously I'm having some hitting issues right now, so trying to get those corrected. Meanwhile, Maxwell Fowler against Mateo, and that is nearly strike three. A two and two again, and a little grounder up the middle. Weak contact off of Fowler, and the out is recorded. That is really Max's game right there. Bottom two. Now Byron Buxton hitting 308 on the season, but Pomeran's not done getting the strikeouts. Four for four already. Now Willie Ordonez, he's going to send this to left, but just in front, it's foul. Two and two from Pomeranz. Oh, it's in the dirt. It's five for five in the strikeout department. Not good for Minnesota. Let's go top three. That's a grounder over to third base, and they'll go around the diamond to convert the double play. I was really concerned, though, with all these strikeouts. I really wasn't seeing the ball that well and was just trying to get through it. I really don't know what was up with my process at this point. 
but we do draw a 2-0 walk with Mookie Betts, and then Goldschmidt is able to get a grounder through the middle. Betts round second. He'll reach third safely. Now runners at the corners with Minnesota trying to take the game's first lead. Miguel Sano, 1-1, reaching out for a fastball. Coming up empty, now two strikes. Another fastball away, Sano reaches, misses again. What a start for Drew Pomeranz. I wasn't expecting him to completely dominate our hitters like this. And then to make things worse, the fourth opens with a blast to right. That is a solo homer for Michael Brantley. And the Yankees are on the board. Later in the fourth, Aaron Judge. Breaking ball, hammered to left. If it's fair, it's gone off the foul pole. Judge has a homer, his ninth of the season. Two solo shots for New York. I know we've had a lot of home run oriented games lately. Sometimes it just goes that way as the Yankees are held to two in the inning. Fowler does finish with the strikeout. So the Twins trailing by two and the bottom of the fourth begins with a drive from Puig. This has a chance to go and it's gone into the bullpen. Puig gave us the solo homer in the previous game. He's back with number 11 of the season. Twins just down by a one. Meanwhile for Willie Ordonez, another bad at bat. I just wasn't picking anything up, and especially the off-speed was giving me a ton of issue. I couldn't track anything, but was just trying to see if it would get better throughout the game. That happens a lot of times. We go on to the fifth. One batter did reach against Fowler, but he's able to limit the offense again of New York and retire them in the fifth. Bottom five, Minnesota. We have Justin O'Connor, who will be starting now for the next couple weeks. And he strikes out on a good changeup from Pomeranz. That brings up Mookie Betts, and he's gonna drive to left, and it will tie the game at two. Solo home run. Four runs in this game, all produced the same way. 460 feet on that third deck home run by Mookie Betts. Now Max trying to get through the sixth inning. There's a base hit from Mark Trumbo. And that brings up Gary Sanchez. Oh, to a line drive over to Goldschmidt. And they get the second out there as well. A double play for Minnesota. Thankfully, we were able to work some counts against Drew Pomeranz, and he didn't make it deep into this game. Now we face the former twin, Lance Lynn, who misses outside with a breaking ball against Buxton. Two and two, now connecting on a breaking ball, but it's foul. Two and two again. Good curve from Lynn. Buxton down on strikes. This was definitely one of the most frustrating games I've played on MLB 19. We'll take it to the seventh. Again, the leadoff batter able to reach for New York. Puig does cut it off to limit the hit to just a single for Aaron Judge. Fowler trying to make it through a seventh inning as he drops a curveball at the bottom of the strike zone. The 0-1 and a fastball is there. Now ahead in the count, just off the plate, trying to nail the corner with a slider. And now missing low. Good patience on a bird. Payoff pitch in there. Strike three. It's a sinker. And Fowler gets the first out. That brings up Mateo with a line drive, and they'll get the double play the same way they did earlier. The sixth and seventh end the same way for New York. Let's stay with their hitters, though. In the eighth, Tyler Duffy's in the game as he strikes out Chris Owens. Here are the numbers for Maxwell Fowler. Very solid outing for him. Got some strikeouts early, but his better innings were when he wasn't getting strikeouts. Now it's a drive. Hit well to left field. Betts has to go all the way back to the warning track to retire Gene Segura. And now Kevin Pillar. Two down, two strikes, and he got him strike three. Good job by Duffy, improving his numbers. So can Minnesota break this tie and send the fans home happy? Valera on the ground, a bouncer to second. He's retired. Betts tied the game in his previous at-bat. Now with one down in the eighth, the line drive hit right at short. Obviously frustrating to not really have productive at-bats unless we had home runs. So we take it to the ninth. Here is a line drive over to Betts. And Sam Freeman records the first out. 
Here's Judge with one on and two down as he's way ahead of the slider. Falls behind in the count and then lifted down the line and right. Puig is over and now the Twins have a chance to win it. Bottom of inning number nine. Full count for Buxton and down on strikes. Another strikeout for Minnesota and we're going to extra innings today. The Yankees unable to score since the fourth inning with their two home runs. Now it's Sam Freeman getting the strikeout of Greg Bird. Not sure why he doesn't like that call. With two down, stopped by Freeman. Good innings for Sam Freeman sending us bottom 10. Willie Ordonez, he's fallen behind again and once more down on strikes. Justin O'Connor two and two. Not swinging at that at least. Three and two now. Easy take there, and O'Connor represents the winning run on first base. Gray Vic Valera hitless on the day, and a bouncer over to Greg Bird. And that's going to send us to an 11th inning with both offenses ice cold. Usually, Rysel Iglesias is the closer. Today, he's in a different role with this hit in the air to left. Twins record the first two outs of the 11th. Now it's Michael Brantley who already has a home run. This is lifted into center. And the Twins pitching continues to put zeros on the board. Both bullpens put to the test. Here for New York, Nick Rumbelow enters the game in the 11th to face the Twins one through three. Beginning with Mookie Betts. High drive left field, it's deep, and Mookie Betts has walked the Twins off in the 11th inning. Minnesota wins. He might not play in Boston anymore, but that does not mean that Mookie Betts is not going to be a problem for the Yankees this year. The Twins win this series in Minnesota. Mookie Betts connects twice on solo home runs. And in an episode where we've really struggled, it was nice to catch a couple breaks there and get the long ball. I'd like to see us do a little more than hit home runs going forward though. When we're hitting doubles and getting consistent contact, that's when I know we're actually in a pretty good place offensively. But it always feels good to win a game like that. Now with Yadier Alvarez healthy, Randy Rosario will go back down to AAA and we'll see if he makes a return to the bigs anytime this season. We've yet to see if anybody in our division is going to be a realistic division contender this year, but Cleveland's made an aggressive move to acquire Hugh Darvish from the Red Sox, although his numbers have not been great this year. We'll see if he turns it around. Here's a minor injury for Dallas Keuchel. Thankfully, nothing serious, but the Twins basically had to play a bullpen game here against Cleveland and win in 12 innings. So not only does our pitcher exit after one out, the bullpen even has to go all the way to extras and they only allowed two runs as we get another great outing from Tyler Duffy bringing his ERA down even further. So that would tire out the bullpen quite a bit and the next day against Kansas City we lose 14 to 1. You could kind of expect a game like that, but we win the series anyway against them. Here was the 6 to 2 win as we get a home run from Mookie Betts once again, Ordonez and O'Connor both go yard, and we get the 10th victory of the season for Maxwell Fowler. Could he actually be a 20 game winner? That'd be incredible. We further our lead in the division today up to six and a half games over Detroit. Mookie Betts now with 20 homers on the season, very close to his career high. Maxwell Fowler and Dallas Keuchel each having really good seasons. Fowler trying to put his name in Cy Young contention. And then I'm wondering, you know, is it time to bring up Andres Valdez and maybe trade somebody away like Brad Hand? It has just not worked out. 18 innings this year, 15 runs allowed. Not all our moves here have worked out in the bullpen. But next time for Minnesota, I do want to see us meet the White Sox, perhaps, or we can do a minor league episode. You let me know what you want to see down below in the comment section, and I'll do some more practicing, trying to get the hitting down more. Sometimes I sit down and it's fine. Other times I just can't track the pitches. I've had a lot of trouble this year in 19 for whatever reason. But having a great time with the game and the series, so much more on the way. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you with more Twins action soon. Have a great day, everybody.